Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike and I hope your day is going well. Today's video is going to be about setting up a PFSense firewall. So PFSense is an open source, free BSD based router and firewall software and it offers many features you might see in a commercial enterprise firewall appliance. In fact, it is used in many enterprise environments. It's fairly lightweight in its base form and thus can be installed on just about any old computer although you may need to find an older version if you want to install on a 32-bit processor. It can also be run as a virtual appliance under a hypervisor, which I may demonstrate in a later video. Although it's recommended that the network interfaces you use are either directly attached to your motherboard or are added via PCI adapter, it does have limited support for USB-attached Ethernet devices. Keep in mind, it may bottleneck your speeds a bit if you're dealing with speeds of over 480 megabits per second if you choose to use a USB device. For this demonstration, I'll be using one of my sandboxes, an older HP Elite Desk Mini with an i5-4590 and 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is complete overkill for running PFSense. It can run fine on an old Intel Core 2 Duo or similar with as little as 1 gigabyte of RAM. For perspective, my current production PFSense box supports a humble Celeron 1007U CPU and 8GB of RAM. Even with a few plugins installed and lots of active traffic, it very rarely sees more than 10% resource utilization. Anyway, let's get started. First, you'll want to go to the PFSense website here. I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Then you'll select your architecture. Ours is going to be AMD64. And then the installer will be an ISO installer. We'll go ahead and download this and wait for that to complete. Once the file is downloaded, we'll need to find it in our downloads folder and extract it using a tool such as 7-zip. We'll have an ISO image within this folder. Let's go ahead and open up Rufus. Make sure that you have your USB drive plugged in and that you have the right one selected. Go ahead and select your image. It should automatically detect that it should be written in DD image mode. So we'll go ahead and hit OK here and then click on Start. OK. This should take a little while. We'll wait for that to complete. Once the image is finished writing, you can remove your USB drive and plug it into the other computer. And I'll go ahead and switch over now. All right, we'll go ahead and boot up the computer. Hit Escape to enter the Options menu. Then we'll go down and select Boot menu. Select our boot drive for PFSense. Once everything loads, You'll be dropped into the installer menu here. Go ahead and hit accept. Hit OK to install PFSense. Continue with the default key map. Here we have a couple different options. The ZFS option would be for if you were going to set this up with a RAID array for redundancy. We only have the one drive, so we won't be able to do that right now. The other two are UEFI and BIOS boot, which will work on our single drive setup. I'll be selecting UEFI boot. However, if you're running on much older hardware, you may need to choose BIOS in order to have it boot correctly. It'll begin installing. Once it's finished, it'll ask if you would like to make any final modifications. We'll select No, and then we'll reboot. As we're rebooting, we'll make sure that the flash drive is unplugged and that our USB Ethernet interface is plugged in. Here it'll ask us for a little bit of initial configuration. We'll go ahead and select in for no as we can set up VLANs later. Here it'll ask us for the WAN interface and then it'll ask us for the LAN interface. If you're not sure which interface is which, you can unplug the Ethernet from one of them to identify which one it is. In this case, we'll go ahead and unplug the Ethernet cable from the USB device. As you can see, the USB device is UE0, and I want that to be my LAN interface. That means that EM0 will be our WAN interface, so we'll enter EM0, enter, and our LAN interface will be UE0. Y to proceed. Once 
once you're at this screen, you should be done on your PF Sense box. Go ahead and make sure that your LAN cable is plugged into your computer, and we'll head back to our desktop. Alright, we're back on the computer that the LAN cable is plugged into. Go ahead and open up a browser, and enter the IP address that was displayed under LAN on the PF Sense box. In our case, that's 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. Here, we'll just go to Advanced and Continue. The PFSense default username should be admin, and the password should be PFSense, all lowercase. Here we'll click Next, Next again. Here we'll give our device a host name and enter a domain if applicable. In our case, I'll leave it as PFSense, and we're just going to leave this as local domain. If you already have a DNS server set up, like if you're running one off of a Windows server instance, you can enter that IP here. Otherwise, you can use something like Cloudflare 1.1.1.1 or Google's 8.8.8.8, .8 or you can leave it blank to use the upstream DNS from the WAN port. In our case, we're going to stay with the upstream DNS from our modem, and then we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll stick with the default time server, and then we'll enter our time zone, which is America, Chicago. We'll go ahead and click Next again. I'd suggest leaving everything on this page as default unless you know what you're doing. So we'll go ahead and scroll down and click Next. We'll leave the LAN interface alone for now, but later on we'll likely be changing it. Go ahead and click Next. And then it'll ask you for a strong admin password. Hit Next. Once that's all done, we'll go ahead and click Finish and it should bring us to our PFSense interface. We'll accept the license agreement, close, and we're here. So this is the dashboard. It'll give you tons of useful information, resource utilization, uh, bandwidth allocation, current IP, current WAN and LAN IPs, and so on. Now there is a lot to learn as far as configuring PFSense. And I do plan on making some follow-up videos on basic configurations, things that I like to do on my own network, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or run into any issues, let me know down below, and I'll see you in the next video.